Hello YouTube Vintage Radio Collectors. Now here's one you don't see that often. Kind of a funny coincidence on this one. I bought it a week ago at an antique market. And I've been working on it. I have it pretty much finished. Um, it's kind of funny. I was putting it together um, a couple days ago. And then I took a break and watched some TV for a while. And I was watching a show called Supernatural. And they had one of these in one of the scenes. A white one just like this, which is kind of interesting. You do see them around. Mid-century modern. And this is one of these radios that makes me understand while I'm still in this. While I still like working on these. Let's just turn it up a bit. Performance. He was so moved by the music, by what he was hearing, that he... Uh, we'll just wait for some music. There's classical music on this station. Um couple things I can say now that it's I've put it back in shape, recapped it, um, any of the bad tubes. So all the tubes are up in the green zone on the tester. It's at peak um, operating condition. Uh, what's kind of cool about this one, the case is so nice. I've seen a few of these come up. There's no cracks, no splits. It still has great color. The clear plastic isn't damaged by nicotine or cooking grease. Um, even the knobs, the end caps are till still shiny, the plastic's clear, and the knobs aren't broken. I've seen many of these with broken knobs. This one's a real survivor. Um, the AM, you can't really see it through the camera. The AM and FM lights are actually neon bulbs. They're bright enough. Maybe we can see them like this. Now I can see it. I don't know if the camera can pick up the blue one on. couple things I noticed about this radio, it has superb sound. Two 4-inch speakers, and they're quality 4-inch speakers. Um, an extra large output transformer, it's driven by a 50C5, so it's not a lot of power, you know, a watt. But it just has great sound, like there's a certain a depth to it, and it's not a stereo radio, it's a mono two-speaker radio. But it has that tube sound, it has that old tube magic. Um, and the reception on AM, it gets every station that I can get with the best of other radios. The FM reception is superb. Like the stations come out of dead quiet. <laughs> type of books. I also like Canadian touring books. So for drug marts and kit. It has a muting circuit and AFC, which was a little bit ahead of its time. Um, I can just imagine, in the other video I said my grandparents had one of these, buying one of these in 1960 and listening to FM stations on it, people must have just been sitting there going, that sounds so wonderful, it's so clear, there's no static. Um, like, the, like I said, the reception is amazing, it's a good, it's a good circuit design. Um, this one here, it's a fragile radio, and I think that's what makes this one kind of special to me. This plastic, just over tightening a screw, it will crack like crazy. Any kind of drop uh, will damage it. Many of them are heat damaged. Right there I can feel where the output tube is. There's a foil piece in there, the foil falls off, and uh, the plastic warps and then it cracks. I've even seen them with burn marks right through the plastic because it's thin. It's thin plastic. It's interesting when they design these the circuit, the chassis is really first-rate Japanese engineering. Everything else, the case, the knobs, was done cheaply down to a price point but it has a pretty cool look to it. Um, and it is a hot chassis and there's two types of hot chassis. This one is a true hot chassis. I mean, one, one side of the AC cord is soldered right to the chassis. There's others that are actually a floating hot chassis. A lot of the American radios, Canadian radios are like that, where you have a bus wire running through the chassis, which is your B-, and a capacitor resistor 
that holds the chassis up just off ground. Um, and in those I replaced them with a safety capacitor and a polarized cord. Uh, what I actually did with this one, I'm just going to turn it around. I put a new wire on it for antenna, but it already had an interlock system. Okay, let's just move this out of the way. And what I did, the cord was turning to goo. The plastic was going on it. So what I did was, I have a bunch of these polarized cords from um, cheap tape recorders and radios and stuff. So what I did is I shaped this so that this can only go in one way. And that's with the neutral wire on that side. So the chassis will be at neutral and it really lowers the risk. And so now it has a modern cord. And when you can see the condition of the masonite, what amazes me is just with a little bit of wire, the FM stations it can pick up. It's just amazing. Anyway, thanks for watching and listening.